long before the announcement of the latest movie in the Dragon Ball franchise. Over 10 years ago from the time of making this video, a devoted fan by the name of Mixie saw the appeal to the base idea. What if we glanced away from the universe-ending, time-bending stakes we've become accustomed to, and instead zeroed in on the idea of being a simple, humble superhero in the world of Dragon Ball? While I don't normally cover work before first obtaining the author's permission, the unfortunate truth is Mixie has only posted twice in the last nine years, and all attempts to contact them have gone unanswered. So if you're out there, Mixie, we implore you to return to the Dragon Ball community, and maybe we as the Mondo crew can do a little detective work to thank you properly. <laughs> Satan City the rich, high-tech home of Earth's legendary savior, and today, center of the modern world. And like every respectable, fictional metropolis, this one too has its very own superhero, the Great Saiyan Man. No, really, not the titular figure of the city, but our familiar vanquisher of all that is evil. Role model to all children, and likely not instilled by himself, a profitable tourist attraction as well. Nearby, a hostage situation takes place. The gunman threatens that if anyone comes any closer, he'll blow her brains out. Do they hear him? The cops stand together, not at all in proper formation, almost as if they have an invisible shield in front of them. One of them asks, where is he? He's never been this late before. At this rate, we'll have to take care of this ourselves. The next glances back to the crowd behind him, scoffing they might get booed off stage if they do so. The people want to see a superhero in action, not them. The third humorously shouts for the offender to hold his horses and they'll deal with him in a minute. Just as the middle officer predicted, a man who oddly resembles Barry Khan, the actor who would years later play the Great Saiyan Man in Super, well after this manga was made, calls out they want the Great Saiyan Man. Where's the Great Saiyan Man? Mirroring the casual demeanor of the police, the would-be victim flips a victory sign to her friends as they talk about how jealous they are, wishing they had been taken hostage instead. The other clamoring in excitement that she's going to be rescued by the Great Saiyan Man, causing the detainee to giggle that she guesses it's just her lucky day. Unfortunately for her, the cops finally decide that their superhero is taking too long. It's going to be up to the three of them. His subordinate double checks to make sure he's positive about that decision. The crowd will be pretty disappointed. Just as the most mustachioed of the three questions, Hey, isn't that him over there? Looking his way. Sure enough, it is him! Their coveted superhero has arrived! But something confuses the officers. No dancing? No poses? Why is he simply stomping over to the suspect? The senior law enforcer scratches his head. This is quite strange. He's usually so exuberant with his entrances. Heck, he didn't even notice him arrive. The other speculates that maybe he's just in a hurry today. As he approaches the pair, we're met with completely contrasting emotions. The victim blushes with fantasies that this is just like in the movies. As the perp begins to panic, he tells himself to stay calm. He can't do anything as long as he has a hostage. That's how these hero types work. The superhero towers over the villain. He didn't think he'd be so big. He looks a lot shorter on TV. He hollers that he better stay back, or he will. What the? Knocking out the gunman and delivering the girl to the officers, the Great Saiyan Man resolves the situation in mere seconds after arriving. If we look closer, it seems like he may have played the situation a tad too fast and loose, given the spirals around the girl's eyes. Dumbfounded, even knowing full well what their hero is capable of, the senior policeman thanks him, but isn't given anything in response. The trio can do little more than watch him soar through the sky. Maybe he's having a bad day. He didn't even do the dance. A bad day. They have no idea. No! Absolutely not! Never! Not a chance! No! Earlier. It's revealed it was actually Piccolo playing the Great Saiyan Man, who doesn't seem happy about it. Gohan pleads. Oh, come on, just for one day, please? But Piccolo doesn't care if it's only for a tenth of a second. He said no. The Saiyan explains he promised his mom he would concentrate on his tests. He can't leave the city unprotected for so long. Though if that is the case, then he can go ask his father to do it. 
But Gohan retorts that would be a mistake and he knows it. So Piccolo recommends Sen Shinhan then. Eventually working his way through pretty much all the Z Fighters. But Gohan has an excuse for all of them and why it has to be Piccolo. He doesn't know where Tien is and doesn't have the time to go looking for him. And Yamcha would just use the fame to try to get a date. But Namek would even scream he has Krillin, Yajirobe, Puar, anybody but him. I knew I was going to say yes eventually. I always say yes to him and the little runt knows it. The scene as he was about to accept doing the most embarrassing, degrading, painful thing of his entire existence. He figured he might as well try to put up a fight. Why are you doing this to me? Haven't I done enough for you? Remember that one time I died? Though eventually, he'd give in. Gohan thanks Piccolo and assures him he owes him one. The Namekian feels otherwise. He doesn't owe him one. The kid owes him a lifetime. Looking down at the wristwatch that'll transform him from the mighty Demon King to the valiant Sentai Savior of Satan City. He resolves to his fate. For reasons he could only suspect had to do with the feeling of utmost disgust and disdain towards that horrible outfit. Piccolo's powers were unable to produce clothes that matched the great Saiyan man's costume. He had to resign himself to the fact that one more person would have to know of his misfortune. I need your help. Peeking his eyes just over the windowsill, a surprised Bulma would eventually let the Namekian inside after he explained the situation. She thinks it's so sweet of him to help out Gohan like this. She's always admired the special bond the two of them have. Frantically looking around to make sure nobody else knows why he's here, he says that may be, but he might end up cutting all ties with him after this. He questions where Vegeta is. It'd rather not have him finding out about this. The scientist jests, Vegeta? What's a Vegeta? Oh, he means that elusive creature that lives in the gravity room. It only comes out every once in a while to feed. It's been so long since she'd last seen it, she was starting to think it was just a myth. She tells Piccolo to wait here. This'll take a moment. And a bit later, Bulma explains how she adjusted the helmet so it doesn't show the lower side of his face. She's pretty sure people would notice the, well, green. He thanks her and turns to leave. As the scientist tells him not to worry, he'll do great. This should be easy for someone as strong as him, right? Which isn't the problem in Piccolo's mind. But anyway, he should leave before. <laughs> Caught dead in the headlights, Vegeta doesn't need to see his face to sense Piccolo's key signature. He bellows out with laughter to the annoyance of the others. The Namekian removes his helmet, resolved to his own defeat. The prince chides if there's even a shred of pride left within Piccolo. What's next? If Gohan would have asked him to. Actually, he doesn't think there's anything worse than this that he could have requested. And he agreed to it. Over his antics, Piccolo asks if he's done. He'd like to leave. But Vegeta, given his personality at this point in the series, has to go for the jugular. He boasts they just face it. He himself is the only real badass left in the group. Piccolo is nothing more than a glorified pet now. Turning away, he continues his chuckling as he quips there's nothing like a good laugh to work up an appetite, asking Bulma what's for lunch. And saying nothing, she sports a devious smile. So yeah, today is shaping up to be pretty much the worst day of my life, and the fact that it's barely even midday kind of worries me. But I figured as long as I could find a hole which to crawl into to spend the rest of my days after this is all over, I could make it to at least sunset. Ready? At least I'm not alone in this. That hole better be big enough for two. Away, Mr. Satan shouts out for Boo to hurry. She's going to be on TV any second now, as he looks for a cassette to tape it. Inside. We see he's referring to a segment on the news. The reporter reads live from Central Boulevard, where the great Saiyan man has just stopped an armed bank robbery, although a little more violent than usual. Boo argues they only show Videl for a few seconds. It's always Gohan who they focus on, but the proud father doesn't care. That's his little girl. Jumping up, he shouts that from the time she first tied her shoelaces to her first day of school, he has immortalized it all, revealing quite literally a locked library for daddy's little girl. That's when he hears the reporter announce it would seem that say a woman is also on the scene today, causing the world champ to swing his head around back to the TV. 
clamoring. There she is, my beautiful, precious. Yeah! Unbelievable! Ladies and gentlemen, this is sweet little flower. Please! Oh God! Please don't hurt me! Please! We're taken to the scene where the less than heroic duo do their best to fill in the roles of Gohan and Videl. While a poor man pleads for his life, Piccolo informs Vegeta, or rather, Saiyan Man number two, that he's pretty sure that's one of the hostages, prompting the prince to holler. Then those better be tears of gratitude! Hear that! I saved your life! So say thank you! Thank you! <laughs> Still. I can't help but get the feeling we're doing this wrong. Vegeta darts over to his partner in... Justice? Shouting, of course we're doing this wrong. That's the whole point. He tells Piccolo to think about it. Does he really think this will be the one and only time Gohan asks this of him? If they show him now how bad he is at it, he'll think twice before coming to him next time. Showing off that big brain energy, Piccolo sees what he means and thinks on it for a second. The prince cockily smirks, there's no need to thank him. He just doesn't want to get dragged into his mess again. The Saiyan actually takes us a bit further. He tells Piccolo to be honest. Doesn't he want to get back at him for this? At least just a little? The Namek begins to speak, almost against his question, when Vegeta tells him to just imagine his face when he sees this, leaving Piccolo in silence. Vegeta snarls, it would serve the little brat right, wouldn't it? But Piccolo can only imagine the disappointed, sad expression of the little boy who first befriended him. The human who gave himself faith in humanity. So naturally, Piccolo can't bring himself to let Gohan down, even if it means doing something like this. Taking his body language into account, Vegeta snips. On a scale of 1 to 10, how whipped are you? Leaving Piccolo to sigh in resignation once more. The deal! The deal! What's in the... My little baby! The world champ pleads, he knows she said she wanted to get stronger, but this is ridiculous. Just look at what she's done to her body, it's grotesque. Look at that neck, those shoulders, and her breasts, they're all but gone. No man will want her now. Pointing back at the great Saiyan man, he screams this is all his fault. He filled her head with all that training crap, he's responsible for this, so we better not dare leave her now. Running back over to who he thinks is his daughter, he tells his princess not to worry. She still has the lithe and petite thing going for her. Guys dig that. No matter how bad it gets, her daddy will always love his whittle. When something begins to become clear to Mr. Satan. This is not his daughter. Pleading for Boo to go faster. He doesn't think that was Videl after all. Piccolo takes this as the perfect time to answer Vegeta's question with a question of his own. From a scale of 1 to 10, how permanently damaged are you? With our superheroes set out on saving the citizens of Satan City, even for just a day, will they be able to put their pride aside for just a few hours to ensure the innocent are protected? Or will Piccolo give in to Vegeta's plan of doing such a terrible job? They will never have to play hero again. After their first not-so-valiant attempt at thwarting bad guys, and while Vegeta tries to mentally recover from his encounter with Mr. Satan, our interim heroes sit atop a building, trying to sulk away the rest of the day. Vegeta chides his partner that this is all his fault. Sick of hearing it, the great Saiya intern shouts, All right already, give it a rest, will you? But he isn't just talking about this particular scenario today. He means all of this Saiya man business. Though, what could he possibly mean by that? Vegeta tells him to think about it. The cape, the posing, it's almost like a failed attempt at copying someone Gohan thinks is cool. However, he better not be implying what he thinks he is. Piccolo argues there's no way he helped create this. If anything, it's his fault. Vegeta is equally confused by the accusation. There's no denying that the boots, the spandex, the name, all reek of Saiyan propaganda. This one is all his. I'm not the childhood hero here, you are! The hero idea was Bulma's and it's obvious who her main source of inspiration was. It's all your fault! <laughs> After their little back and forth, the pair release a sigh of defeat. What does it matter whose fault it is now anyway? Piccolo then brings up the point that he keeps thinking that they never really got punished for their past deeds. 
maybe in some twisted way they deserve this? When Goku appears! Referring to their previous contemplation, even if they are being punished, anything but this. Goku begins to wearily apologize to his son, but Chi-Chi saw him on TV and is pretty upset because he said... <laughs> then something clicks. Something's off. Fully recognizing them, he happily chortles. Oh, it's you guys. I almost didn't recognize you. Before inquiring what Piccolo and Vegeta are doing here. No! But leaving our hero to wonder if it was something he said, Vegeta refuses to be seen like this by his greatest rival. Luckily, Piccolo has a bit more humility. The Namekian takes his time and explains everything to Goku from the beginning to now. Everything leading up to the events of how he ended up here. Starting to understand, Goku just wonders how on earth Bulma managed to get Vegeta to do it. Flashing back, we're treated to the scene in question. You will help Piccolo out, or I swear to God, I will blow up the gravity room and never rebuild it. Have fun catching up to Goku on the Stairmaster. Pleading with her to calm down, this threat would get the prince to do pretty much anything. Goku chuckles that that sure sounds like something she would do. Either way, it's nice of Piccolo to help Gohan out with this. Who responds that people keep saying that, but it doesn't seem to make him feel any better. Then surprisingly, Vegeta returns! Stomping over. He shouts, Yeah, that's right! I'm wearing a dress! You got something to say about it? Our hero asks what he's talking about. It's a tunic, not a dress. He jokes Vegeta really doesn't know much, does he? Leading us to wonder how Goku of all people knows the difference. At any rate, Vegeta still doesn't like being told what's what. That's when Goku resolves to help them out. He knows he has just the thing they need. Leading to Piccolo's greatest fear, he begs Goku to wait. He never said he needed his help. Zipping in and out of reality in mere seconds, he holds out in front of him the thing that will answer all their questions. The Namek is afraid to ask, but what is in his hand? He tells how it's one of Gohan's old superhero comic books. Whenever Chi-Chi went in to buy Gohan more books, he'd sneak one of these in without her noticing. He heard kids like them, so he thought Gohan might enjoy them too. And he did! Over the years, he was always asking for more. Actually, Goku guessed you could say he kind of grew up reading this stuff. Maybe that's where he got the idea for the Great Saiyan Man from. Now with a definitive source to blame, Vegeta and Piccolo lash out on Goku, screaming, This is all his fault! He is why they were forced to do this! That's when a crime in progress interrupts the trio. A villainous older kid heartlessly tears a bag away from his underclassmen, taunting him to try and take it back if he can. The younger child can only cry for him to return what belongs to him. Annoyed, Vegeta mutters under his breath that they have to be kidding. While he tries to argue with Goku, this is a case for a kindergarten teacher. His Saiyan brethren implores that there's no such thing as a crime too small for a superhero. Putting his helmet back on, Piccolo blurts for them to leave this to him. Getting Goku excited, he shouts, That's the spirit, Piccolo! While Vegeta simply can't believe that he's serious. As he makes his way over to the children, reality hits the bully. The younger kid confidently bellows that he's gonna get it now. As the aggressor throws out his hands to plead, he was just teasing. He didn't mean anything by it. When... He grabs the wrong kid. Confused as well as a bit scared, the child begins to nervously object to... But the great Saiyan man shouts right in his face to know if he had at least tried to do something first. Being four years old is no excuse for helplessness. But the youngster squeaks out. He's... Actually, six. But six? Isn't he ashamed of himself for giving up like this? The Namekian continues to berate the, well, victim by explaining he is basically inviting every bully, monster, and space tyrant to come and pick on him. His mother is not going to materialize out of thin air every time he's in trouble, and the great Saiyan man can't be there to save him every time he needs it. He has to learn. His words trailing off. Goku thinks he understands what this is. When Vegeta suggests he might want to go and do something about this, it seems like he's five seconds away from kidnapping that child and dropping him off on a deserted island. Prompting Goku to politely tap him on the back, urging a word with his ally. 
As the pair sneak out of earshot of the students, the bully turns toward the youngster and ironically asks if he's okay. But before he can answer, the great Saiyaman swivels back around and heads back towards him. After this quick powwow, Piccolo sternly tells the bully to be nice to others, protect the weak, and to get back to school. And just as sternly as the other, he tells him to believe in himself and grow a backbone. With their full attention, he asks if he made himself clear. Piccolo folds his arms and walks away, but doesn't see what was so wrong with the way he was doing things. Taking off into the air, the kids are left... Uh, bit speechless. A while later, the three of them make their way to what appears to be the middle of a desert, but with these poses. Piccolo questions how much longer they have to do this. This pose makes him feel ridiculous, or more ridiculous. Goku informs them that they should be there any second now and for the two of them to just keep posing. That's when the Saiyan spots a truck beelining it for a corner off a cliff. Kitchen appliances? That's what we have back there? To the criminal's dismay, they only just now realize that they've stolen the wrong van. Though, all this means to the driver is that they will have to find a way to sell this stuff and... <laughs> Slamming on the brakes, they spot the great Saiyamans standing in the road. Hey, get off the road, you freaks! Clearly not recognizing the saviors of Satan City, the thief jumps out of the car with a rifle, shouting these kids picked the wrong day and the wrong place to play hero. However, his passenger begs his idiot partner to stop. That's the great Saiyan man! They say he was trained by Mr. Satan himself! Though, as many fools do, the device he's holding gives the bandit a air of confidence. He bellows that they're both nothing more than frauds, nothing but media fodder. He wants to see them deal with real bullets. The beast man stammers, he's making a run for it. Sure enough, Piccolo effortlessly catches each of the bullets. This is the end of the road for you, criminal. Goku jumps in between them yelling, cut! In frustration, Piccolo asks, what now? Goku tells him he didn't follow the script. He isn't supposed to catch the bullets. He's supposed to let them bounce off his body to show off his invulnerability. Calling out to the thief, Goku compliments that what he did was great though, just keep that same energy and do exactly like that again. But if it's all the same, he'd actually like to surrender, if that's okay. However, Piccolo commands he just do as he said already. This is the end of the road for you, criminal. Off screen, Goku gives them his nod of approval and instructs them to proceed. He then reminds Piccolo not to forget about the other one. Then turning to Vegeta, he's curious whether he plans to help or not. The prince quips, Help with what? Can't I just stand here and look pretty? Our hero argues that a sidekick should always be by the hero's side. You never know when you might be needed. Stepping up, he only grunts for him to make sure that he tells Bulma that he really helped. As Piccolo slowly makes his way to the other villain with immaculate heroic vernacular, he demands that he surrender. He can't escape. And for some reason, instead of simply cutting his own losses and sprinting away, the criminal thought it would be a good idea to try and run off with as many boxes as he could. Horrified, he hurls all sorts of kitchen appliances, begging not to come any closer. Getting wailed on by everything from toasters to blenders, Piccolo supposes he should just let these things bounce off his body to just be safe. Stay away! That's when the bandit throws something even the great Demon King would be terrified of. Ducking, it bounces harmlessly off Vegeta's head, who in turn glances down at what in the world that was. Goku already knows and instantly makes the connection. Piccolo does everything he can to keep himself from curling up into the fetal position, almost whimpering he thought that was for him. Bending over, Vegeta picks up the object in question, asking if he's lost his mind. Goku tries in vain to warn him, but it's too late. The prince reveals it's just a stupid rice- YOU'LL NEVER TAKE ME! Cooker. The agitated Saiyan screeches to know just what the heck that was for as his rival tries to get him to calm down. He explains Piccolo can't help it. His father was imprisoned in one of those things and he inherited all of his memories. This is just a result of that. It's kind of an involuntary reaction. 
Flashing back to several years ago, we spot the Sun family having a small potluck with Piccolo. Uh, I knew you were out to get me! Goku assures he is already ashamed of it enough as it is, so give him a break. He didn't mean it. Though we all know Vegeta just isn't going to be the bigger man here. He cackles how he's going to enjoy mocking the Namekian into hell and back with this. He should be ashamed. This is pathetic. He's surprised he can still walk around with his head held high, as something similar catches Goku's attention. Though probably more theoretical than practical, remembering their short time absorbed by Majin Buu, he warns Vegeta not to look now, but there's a worm crawling towards his leg. Die! Die! Die, you disgusting abomination! Gross! With our heroes obtaining a new coach, they slowly work to improve their Saiyaman skills and, in a sense, pay atonement for their past deeds. As the day draws on, what other trouble could Satan City possibly get into? Making their way back to the city, a couple more bad guys are taken into custody by the Satan City police, one of which hugging an officer and profusely sobbing how sorry he is. And if we look above, it's apparent some damage has been done to a nearby highway. Around the corner, Piccolo stands silently as those around him begin to get a little less comfortable with the idea of getting friendly with him, thinking he's the real great Saiyaman, of course. As a crowd gathers, one of the men in attendance note there is something different about him. His colleagues already well under this impression. The cameraman quips, It's like I told you! Going on to detail how the great Saiyan man is trying to reinvent his image. He's going for the cool and silent type. Those heroes are way more popular. His friend chimes in, that's nice and all, but he's not sure if the extra destructiveness helps. That's when a woman chimes in with her take. If they asked her, she'd say it's more like, that's a completely different person. Her statement causes a chain reaction of speculation. Another notices that now that she mentions it, he does seem a bit bigger. In the background, an elderly couple makes a similar argument with the old man having the same thought that this doesn't seem like the Saiyan man they've come to know. But his wife questions how many people can fly or lift cars who are just running around Satan City. Surely he's the one and only. Piccolo knows this is bad. If they figure out there is someone else behind the mask, they might stop trusting the great Saiyan man altogether. But isn't this the same crowd that buys all of Mr. Satan's crap? Why are they suddenly so perceptive? The Namekian tries to think what he did wrong and how to make this right. Back in the crowd, a man tells he didn't see a great Saiyan man make a single pose today. And doesn't he usually do the dance thing? Isn't that like his gimmick or something? A child mentions how the dance was his favorite part. How come he's not doing it anymore? And dance? Is that what he has to do? But he doesn't know if he can go that far. Still keeping at his coaching gig, Goku instructs Vegeta that he should be down there with him. Though so this is met with predictable screaming to leave him alone. If he hears one more woman come up to him to tell him he's such an inspiration to all the little girls out there, he's going to blow his pretty pink top. That's when they realize, is Piccolo's key rising? Trying to reassure himself, our hero monologues, of course he can go that far. He put the costume on, didn't he? There's no reason to act like there is any dignity left to salvage. If you're going to do something, do it all the way. So what does he know about dancing and posing? Begin, you force! Oh, he just needs to do what they did. But wait. He never actually met them. He actually has no idea what they did. So in that case, he'll just have to copy one of Gohan's moves. But wait again. He always looked away when Gohan would do that. It was just too embarrassing to watch. So now what? What does he do? What does he know about dancing? Still gazing down at him, Vegeta comments that with all this tension, it's almost as if he's preparing for an attack. Even the crowd takes note that it looks like he's about to do something. And with 
With the most minimal of movements, everyone wonders what he just did. He just sort of opened his arms? Is he asking for something? What's it supposed to mean? Meanwhile, in Piccolo's head, this is on par with one of Gohan's ridiculous Sentai poses. Calling all units! Bank 173's being robbed! We need backup! When he locks out, a police officer's radio goes off to report a bank is being robbed. Piccolo takes the discretion as the perfect opportunity to beeline out of the awkward situation. Quickly in tow, Goku asks if he's okay, to which he not so convincingly presses that he is. However, on the inside, he just knows that he just couldn't do it. He just couldn't. And he failed. But it's not too late. There's one more thing he can try. Is that all you've got? Come and face me, you cowards! While the bank robber unleashes everything he's got, the cops on scene frantically try to call in for reinforcements. They're dealing with an A-class psycho here. Stand back! I've got this! Although he isn't much for the bravado aspect of being a superhero, when it comes to brute force, that's something Piccolo can handle. One of the officers smiles with excitement, exclaiming, Thank goodness you came! We're horribly outgunned! Who the hell are you? Are you at the circus or something? Unfortunately, the aforementioned bravado is a big part of what the people recognize in the great Saiyan man. Corny and overdramatized are things he's well known for. So... All he needs is a pose and the cheesiest speech he can think of. And... When Goku comes out of nowhere, jumping between the pair, he tells everyone to hold on! He recognizes that voice! From the distance, he shouts to know if that's Launch over there. Who questions? Goku? You son of a gun! It is you! The both of them run towards each other in excitement. It's been so many years! Goku shouts, the others aren't going to believe this! And just as the great Saiyan man was about to get into a rhythm, both he and Vegeta just kind of stand idly by, dumbfounded at what's going on. Lodge comments he's a lot bigger and she bets a lot stronger now. Though Goku sees, she still hasn't changed and still doing stuff like this. She sighs for him to give her a break. It's just for her travel expenses. Does he know how hard it is to find a guy like Tension on? And by the way, don't tell her he's with these clowns, referring to our superheroes. Which reminds Goku, offering to introduce the pair, she's actually met one of them before. But what's the point of the costumes if he's just gonna go around revealing their secret identities to everyone? And that's right, no one is supposed to know. He forgot. Still missing the point, what he meant to say is that his son's over there, the great Saiyan man. And that's Videl, Mr. Satan's daughter. Hey! Launch takes this information in, gawking at Goku's seven foot five son and daughter of the world champ, who is clearly a 40 ish year old man. But hey, why not? Anything is possible with Goku, after all. At any rate, she'd like to stay and catch up, but she's gotta start looking for Tien again. Swearing that if she didn't know any better, she'd say he's ignoring her. But Goku motions for her to drop the loot. Reluctantly doing so, she sighs only because it's him. Hopping on her getaway vehicle, she waves him off, shouting they should meet again soon. As she makes her way into the distance, Piccolo and Vegeta continue to stand by silently. But behind them, the police aren't so happy about how all of this went down. The great Saiyan man is friends with that criminal and just let her go! The other scoffs, he's always thought there was something fishy about him. Meaning the other rumors about him must be true too. They should have known better than to trust someone like this. To no faults of his own, Piccolo really tried to keep up the reputation of Gohan's great Saiyan man persona. But at every turn, things just seem to keep going wrong. At the same time, Goku asks Vegeta where he's going. They're not done yet. 
but he barks. He's only getting himself something to eat. And if that's the case, Goku questions if he can get him something too. Drop dead in a pool of acid! That's when he realizes Piccolo's defeated posture. Approaching him, he asks if something is wrong. He looks kind of down. As much as he really likes the fact that Gohan will never ask this of him again, he can't say that he's happy about the fact that, in the span of one day, he might have managed to completely ruin something that he really cared about. He doesn't even know what he's going to say to him. Referring back to the comic book, Goku thinks he might have an idea on how to fix things, telling Piccolo to wait here. And before the dejected Sentai could even inquire what he means and what he's planning, Goku's already on the other side of the planet. Meanwhile, as Vegeta mows down on some lunch, a sinister presence makes itself known. The prince beckons. What the? Aren't you? Chaos breaks out as the vendor runs off screaming for help. Though back with Piccolo, the Namekian is none the wiser. No matter the damage he's done to the superhero's image today, Gohan should be done with his exams soon. So he guesses there's no point in continuing on with this. As an explosion rings out above a skyscraper. And that was no ordinary explosion. It was a key blast. What's going on? That's when a voice from off screen chimes in. Yeah, that packed more power than it needed. Goku hopes he remembers that he's not supposed to actually hurt anybody. Piccolo beckons that if this has anything to do with that idea of his. And it sure does. This is all a part of the plan. Piccolo will see. He figured out what they were doing wrong. Small crimes are good and all, but that's not why superheroes and their superpowers are needed. In order for people to really appreciate a superhero, they need… A supervillain! But Piccolo isn't sure he follows. <laughs> but that voice… Goku didn't! The Saiyan knows Piccolo didn't want anyone else to know about this, but… He figured doing things right was more important. Besides, he couldn't count, since he's, you know, temporary. Lift it up, people of Seda City! No! I have I come, come to put an end to peace and justice! Please, no! Trevor before me! Anybody but him! But I am your worst nightmare come true! No! At Orange Star, something appears to bother Videl. Zooming out, we see her and Gohan are still taking their exams. She speaks up to quietly get the Saiyan's attention without alerting the instructor. She mentions that earlier he had said he had asked Piccolo to fill in for him today, right? Which he confirms is the case. While a little reluctant to bring this up, given she's still kind of new to all this key stuff, but she thinks she could sense Vegeta with him too. Hmm. And after a while, she starts sensing his father with them. Hmm. And this might sound crazy, but she thinks she senses Gotenks now too. Hmm. Clearly not listening to her concerns, Videl snaps at Gohan to pay attention. This is more important than the test. Prompting the instructor to shout at her, he doesn't care whose daughter she is. He will throw her out of here if she doesn't behave. Whispering, she asks if to please concentrate on this a bit. But kind of brushing it off, he thinks he would have noticed something sooner if... They... They were, um... Realizing she's right, he moves to try to finish the exam as fast as he can. <sighs> what? Grabbing him, Gotenks is excited to see he's finally awake. Though, as Vegeta gets a look at what's going on, 
he's all tied up, he screams to know what this is. But can he tell? He's his hostage, aka the damsel in distress. Oh no, this is the last straw. I don't care what Bulma will do. I am done with this stupid game. Let me go now. Away, Goku explains that all he has to do is defeat him while everyone is looking. This way, it will remind everyone what a hero the Great Saiyaman is. However, almost showing his grimace through the helmet, Piccolo grits Goku has no idea what he has done. But he tells him not to be like that. He talked to Gotenks and he wants to help. He isn't as bad as he makes him out to be. Not seeing any way through this, the Namek figures he'll just go and get done what needs to be done. But before he goes, there is something he needs to know. Still struggling to free himself, Gotenks assures Vegeta it's useless. He made sure those would hold no matter what he does. But the prince is more than happy to see about that. He will get these off and when he does. Though at this point in the story, Gotenks reminds that he can still easily kick Vegeta's butt. He knows that, right? Yeah, well once the 30 minutes are up, he'll be Trunks and Goten's problem, not his. In a corner, Vegeta is starting to understand why Piccolo insisted on never using him unless it's absolutely necessary. He's a nightmare. With Piccolo finally getting his mopey self to the scene, Gotenks figures it's about time. He villainously bellows out for the hero to give up. The Great Saiyan Man has no chance of defeating him. He will destroy him and his precious city. Going back to his question, Goku mentioned it had been about 5 minutes since the fusion began, which leaves Piccolo with around 25 minutes to deal with him. Sure, knows the fuse fighter can flatten him against the pavement in less than a minute, however, knowing him he will try to milk as much entertainment as he can out of this, so he probably won't go full out and just fool around. All he has to do is encourage that and try to hang on for 25 minutes. Here he comes! What? Again. The villain shouts that was impressive. He managed to block his attacks. He is a worthy opponent indeed. But those attacks barely had any force behind them. What's going on? Gotenks then continues by sinisterly beckoning he survives his strongest attack. And Piccolo knew it. He was just messing with him. And with that pathetic attack, Gotenks doesn't skip a beat and plays it up the best he can. This monster doesn't even have a scratch on him after his strongest attack. This causes our hero to begin to think, this whole act, this charade, it's really for him. Could this mean... Gotenks really does want to help. Piccolo starts to think the showboat of a warrior really is going to let him win. What do you know, maybe he owes him an apology. All he has to do now is put on a little show and then he's finally done with his nightmare. Vegeta! Vegeta decided to go ahead and take a pot shot at his captor. He screams what the heck Piccolo was just doing standing around for. Seriously, even tied up, he did more than him. But uninformed on the plan, Piccolo screeches if the Saiyan knows what he's done, Gotenks was about to. Giving it back, Vegeta retorts how he was supposed to know. Nobody told him anything about any of this. The Namek barks, he doesn't understand if he takes this the wrong way.
Picking up his hat, he admits that was pretty embarrassing. Seems like he misunderstood how this game was supposed to be played. He exclaims, my bad, won't happen again. Well, Trying to run, eh? He's catching up. Of course he is. He's way faster than either of us. I'm just trying to buy some time to think of something. Should I do something? The think faster! Feel free to help me! This is bad. Really, really bad. Although he could have caught up by now if he really wanted to, this time he really is just toying with him. It's only a matter of time before he wipes the streets with him. While everyone is looking, the great Sandman's reputation will never recover. He knows he can't let that happen. As Gotenks closes in, Vegeta calls out, it's over, but Piccolo is determined otherwise. The Saiyan doubles down for him to face it. They have no chance against him, not as long as he's tied up anyway. I don't care! I'm not giving up! It takes a Super Saiyan to defeat another Super Saiyan! Piccolo argues he knows this, but... Wait, what if... He tells Vegeta to power up to a Super Saiyan right now. The Saiyan argues that if this is about these rings, I already try that, they won't break. The villain then taunts he is getting closer. I don't want you to break them! Just power up as much as you can! Why? Just do it! Only a few more seconds! Gotcha! There! I'm a Super Saiyan! So now what?! And now, back to our main story. Last footage we had was of Saiyan Man 2 having been captured by a new unnamed villain. We now go live downtown with the latest update. Yes, from what we could tell, the great Saiyan Man has succeeded in rescuing his partner. Marvelous, I'd expect nothing less from a hero. He is a warrior, a perfect gentleman. The rumors they are an item must be true. How romantic. And then proceeded to hit his opponent with her. Back with our romantic crime fighting duo, while effective, Vegeta starts to grumble after Piccolo for his resourceful tactics, but he's already well aware that he will pay for this later. Just... just let him get through one thing at a time. With less than 25 minutes left of the fusion, and with Gohan now aware of the situation at hand, our superheroes only have to hold out a little longer until the worst day of their lives is finally over. Will Gotenks be able to restrain himself to uphold the Great Saiyan Man's legacy, or do Gohan and Videl have their work cut out for them when they finally return? After using Vegeta as a Super Saiyan sledgehammer, the Prince bellows, ah, This day has been the worst! As a familiar voice grumbles just out of eyeshot, I'll say. Clearly not very happy with the situation, and now largely no longer in costume, Gotenks gripes that they have hit him with two cheap shots in a row and he himself has yet to land a single hit. Let's rectify that! Effortlessly plunging both our pseudo-heroes into the pavement, the fuse fighter claps the dust off his hands, still appearing annoyed, but somewhat satisfied in finally getting to pay them back for both times they hit him. As Goku at last gets involved, Realizing the situation is now clearly out of hand, he chastises the child for his obtuse actions, though he tries to argue, and fairly at that, that they started it. But Goku doesn't care. He demands he take it down a notch. Prompting Gotenks to tell him to listen, he is no one's punching bag. If they won't stick to the script, then neither will he. Mirroring Piccolo from only a moment ago, Goku begins to think he owes the Namekian an apology, Zipping down, he figures he should at least make sure they're okay. Sensing them out, he first goes to get Vegeta back on his feet, who screams, No! The prince puts his foot down, vowing he will not come out. He doesn't want to help anymore. He tells Goku to explain to Bulma that he's staying under these rocks forever, and it's her fault. Not much further away, we have Piccolo. Can I be done with this now? 
I want to be done with this now. Would it be so bad if I made it seem like the great Saiyaman abandoned a fight? Hardly, but at this point I'll take what I can get. Huh? Dad? If I can't get you to take revenge on Goku and create hell on Earth, the very least you could do is make them feel a little uncomfortable. Leave! Let them think their hero is a coward, and teach that brat a lesson. Let him pick up the pieces. Don't you dare! You owe that child too much, so stand up and go back out there! Embarrassment is a small price to pay for righteousness. Can't you at least let me have this? You don't deserve anything! How hard did I hit my head? Ugh. That was it. That was rock bottom. Picking himself up and clothes beaming himself back into pristine appearance, the Great Saiyan Man begins to develop an idea. In the air, Gotenks whips his head from side to side, looking for any sign of his opponent. At the same time, he gripes how he can't find his moustache. Oh, that was the best part of the costume! He sets his focus back on the objective at hand. He screams out, Isn't hiding a sign of cowardice? Is this any way for a hero to behave? Using telepathy, Piccolo tells him he prefers to call it strategy. He might want to look it up. Concealing his power level, Piccolo spies on his adversary from afar. He knows he has to word this right and makes sure he takes the bait. Still utilizing his telepathic abilities, he taunts Gotenks that he only has about 5 minutes left and that's not enough time for him to find him. He tells Gotenks to just give up. There are too many places to search and he can't be everywhere at once all the while thinking to himself, Come on! But this back and forth plants a seed in the villain's mind. He can't be everywhere at once. Or can he? As Goteng spits out his Super Ghost Kamikaze attack, this is exactly what Piccolo was aiming for. The boy aligns the troops and organizes their plan, and notices they decided to keep the moustache, which he thinks was a good call. He then commands them to spread out and find him, blow him up. But only a little, this isn't for real. But after thinking about it for a second, Gotenks begins to worry if that's even possible for them. Though he's able to shrug off his concern just as quick. Hmm, Piccolo can regenerate, and there's always the Dragon Ball's worst case scenario. Grabbing Gotenks by the arm, Piccolo intentionally gains the attention of all his ghost minions which puts off the fused warrior. Asking if he's really going the self-sacrifice route. Then again, this has kind of become his specialty over the years. Piccolo then shows his regeneration abilities are also useful against burn damage, as he turns to his foe and confidently claims, Not quite. And... SWITCH! As foreshadowed moments ago, the clothes beam makes its reappearance, Gotenks frantically tries to figure out what's going on as he looks himself up and down. The Namekian laughs as it looks like he can make a replica of that stupid outfit after all, if it means putting it on someone he doesn't like. While noticing what Piccolo has done, Gotenks still tries to figure out why he's done it. You'll see. Wait, wait, wait! You have got to be kidding me! It's me, you idiots! Can't you tell by my voice? By my key? My height? Damn it, why? Are you so stupid? Piccolo is in disbelief. He can't believe it actually worked. Those foolish ghosts fell for it. However, he believes it would be wise to change back into the Great Saiyan Man before anyone sees him. <coughs> then, he hears some coughing nearby. Gotenks is still completely conscious, but it does appear he has seen better days. He even compliments our hero. That was a nice trick. Except now he's out in the open. He can't hide anymore, and he himself is still here. And sure, he is, but that will only be the case for another 10 seconds. But 10 seconds? Earlier he said he had 5 minutes! Which Piccolo arrogantly replies to, Yes, I did say that. He knows how much Gotenks loves to fool around when he thinks he has enough time, so maybe this will teach him to keep better track of it himself. 
Oh, fine. You win. With their time up, Gotenks becomes Goten and Trunks once more. So, coming to their senses and finishing the job they agreed upon, in character, Trunks shouts out, this isn't over and they will have their revenge, before awkwardly slinking away. However, with the gang so high up in the air, it's somewhat hard to tell what's going on from the ground below. When Goku, finding the moustache, shouts out the great Saiyan man has won, they are saved. But is he sure? Again, they're so far up nobody can really tell what happened. Not to mention all those explosions from a few seconds ago. When someone else chimes in, I can't be sure, but I think I saw a smaller guy get ripped in half. And then pull himself back together and fly away, right? Uh... With everybody just kind of shrugging off the weirdness, the crowd erupts into cheer and celebrations. He did it! The great Saiyan man saved them all! Although undoubtedly happy the situation is over, Piccolo doesn't know how to feel about Goku being right about all this. Gently tossing the damsel into the superhero's arms, Goku calls out that it's time for the final touch. He whispers that here is where he waves and poses for pictures, but as for himself, he's gonna go get Bulma. They might need her money for… uh… property damage. The pair embrace what's going on as best they can, Vegeta even congratulating Piccolo on everything. Though he can't help but be worried that these rings didn't disappear, even after Gotenks defused. Uh, no, you should be fine. Are you sure? Back at Capsule Corp, Bulma isn't even the slightest bit worried about paying to repair the damages done today. She has enough cash to rebuild the city five times over if she had to. So as long as there were no casualties, they don't need to bother Shenron with it, though they may need him to get those rings off. Hey Bulma! Right on time, Gohan and Videl return from their exams. Videl explains they would have been done sooner, but someone had to go over his answers three times. But this exam was worth 30 points, he couldn't just leave it like that. That's when Gohan questions his father why he's here, and was that Gotenks they sensed earlier? as someone else gets Fidel's attention. She asks Vegeta what he's wearing, but what does she mean? It's her costume, isn't it? It might have started out as that, but ended up a frilly pink glittered mess. Yeah, she'd never wear that. Darting his gaze towards his wife, she admits she was angry. Not addressing the situation further, Vegeta stomps off in the other direction, as Bulma inquires as to where he's going in which he replies, home. He needs to re-evaluate his life choices. Bulma requests that if he's planning on turning evil again, to just please give them all a heads up this time. While Videl and Goku chat in the background, Gohan approaches Piccolo. He asks his friend if he's doing okay. He's going awfully quiet. And the simple truth is, the Namek guesses he wasn't sure what to say to him. He only hopes Gohan realizes what a mistake this was. Surprisingly, he quips, I sure do. Well, I didn't mean, it didn't end as badly as it could have, but… Have you seen what they're saying on social media? On what? Do you know what's trending? You know I don't. The new Great Saiyan Man. Everyone is talking about how cool he was today. Imposing. Brutal. I won't so much as jaywalk if he's around now. I mean, the Great Saiyan Man has had a share of popularity, but it never took off like this before. I should have known you'd raise the bar for me. Try as I might, I just never managed to be as cool as you. Still not knowing what to say, but now for other reasons, he tries to stutter that Gohan is fine just the way he is, as Videl comes out of nowhere to teasingly ask if he's blushing. Panicked, the Namek tries to argue otherwise, but Goku joins in as another antagonizing force, daring him to take off the helmet. After all, He's been wanting to do so the entire day. The gang breaks out in laughter, and Piccolo shouts for Gohan and his girlfriend to get away from him, and for Goku to shut up. A few days later, on Kami's lookout. 91 out of 100 points? 
You make me go through all that in this one time, you don't get the full score? Yeah, but I'm still at the top of my class, so it's fine. And as long as I say it like that to mom, she won't think to ask about the actual grade. So I'm safe. <laughs> hmm. I'm telling Chi Chi. Wait, what? You're joking, right? You're not really going to... Please don't do this to me! Please! 